so much for coming on behalf of myself, Aninde, Maria, and Dr. Hedrick. Um, my name is Adrienne Nolan Smith, and I'm the founder of Wellby. Um, it's Get Wellby on our social handles and our website. Um, we're a newly launched in July media company that was started because I felt that the, the wellness movement and the healthcare system had a, a vast divide and uh, could use some awareness and content inspiration to try to bridge that gap. And so part of that is uh, we say our mission statement is to uh, inspire, inform, and empower you to take control of your health and demand a system that supports you. And one of the most powerful things that you can do to take control of your health is the food that you eat. You probably know that. Um, and so I'd love to introduce our panel to talk about this topic of eating for a meeting. So this is Bashu Ratnam. He is the founder and CEO of Yende and hosting us today. Um, Maria Marlowe is a certified health coach and the author of The Real Food Grocery Guide, which is over there. Um, and then Dr. Pedre is a board certified internist and functional medicine certified doctor, as well as the author of the book Happy Gut. So um, my first question on the topic of eating for new so just make sure everybody knows what that is. Um, immunity is really the body's ability to resist infection and toxins and not succumb to illness in any way, right? So recently we've learned a lot about how the, your microbiome or your gut is regulating to your immunity. So my first question is for Dr. Pedre, um, if you'd be able to explain that connection. Absolutely. So the, the gut is integral to your immune system uh, because 70% of your immune system is found all along the lining of your gut. And it's patrolling everything that is coming through the gut lining. If you think about it, it's our biggest interaction with the outside world is what you put in your mouth. And a lot of it is unseen. Uh, things like uh, fungus and bacteria that are on the food. And we need to protect ourselves from that. The interesting thing is that there are a lot of things that break down this ability of the gut to protect us from the outside world. And probably one of the biggest onslaughts on our immune system is antibiotics. So if you've been on antibiotics once, twice, multiple times, it destroys your gut flora and as a consequence, it increases the permeability of the gut. Now the gut is a permeable membrane, but you don't want it to be too permeable so when it becomes hyperpermeable, then other things can get through, like toxins. One of them is called endotoxin, which comes from dead gram-negative bacteria in the colon. And that's a really potent stimulator of the immune system. But then other things can get through. So foods that commonly wouldn't have caused the problem then start triggering an immune response. So we're seeing in our society this drastic uh, inability to process gluten. And we know that the gluten protein, gliadin, actually increases the permeability of the gut. And then by doing so, it's causing your immune system to be chronically active. So if your immune system is fighting a war here, so if your gut is on fire, then the immune system doesn't have the resources to pay attention to other things that might be getting through. You know, we're constantly protecting our bodies from viruses and the environment, from bacteria, but if you're fighting a war here, then it's too distracted. It allows a lot of these things to get through. And I know this because of my own experience, having been on multiple, multiple courses of antibiotics as a teenager. And as a result, I developed a sensitivity to gluten and to dairy. And in a weekend immune system, my doctors couldn't figure out why they wanted to put me on multivitamin. And what was happening is I was poisoning myself with the food that I was eating. And all it took was taking these foods out and healing the gut lining, strengthen my immune system. So now I don't get sick that often. And if I do, I recover pretty quickly. And we're going to talk about some tips on how to get through viruses much faster. Right? Yes, absolutely. I feel like that was a great explanation. Um, are there any other specific functions, organ systems in the body besides the gut that really impact or influence your immunity? Well, first of all, the bone marrow, because the bones is where all of our immune cells are made. Uh, but the liver also, because the liver is responsible for our ability to detox all sorts of substances, whether it's 
toxic chemicals that we are exposed to, uh, environmental toxins that we are all exposed to. There are 80,000 chemicals out there, only about 1% of which have been tested for safety in humans. So we're one big chemical milieu and a big experiment uh, with things like BPA in plastic, uh, with pesticides like glyphosate. So liver is really key because you need a healthy liver to be able to detox and that also keeps your immune system healthy. And then the spleen also, because it harbors red blood cells and white blood cells and it can release them into circulation as needed. It's a very important part of the immune system uh, aside from the gut, but the gut is probably the key player um, and the most unrecognized one. Yeah, for sure. So gut, liver, the spleen. All right, so start thinking about foods for and that. The bone marrow. <laughs> and the bone marrow, thank you. Um, so what is the sort of process? How does, this is another question for Dr. Pedro on this topic. So when a certain food goes in, what is the process of it sort of bolstering or not, or sort of harming our immune system? I know you mentioned when it actually gets into the gut, but how do you pull those nutrients from it so that you can actually use some certain foods to recover when you're sick? So when our digestive system works using enzymes that break down the food that we eat, and digestion starts in the mouth with saliva, which starts to break down carbohydrates. And then when the food gets to the stomach, the acid in the stomach activates an enzyme called pepsin, which helps break down protein. Protein is really critical because we need the amino acids to make a whole bunch of different uh, neurotransmitters as well as tissue repair. Uh, but if you don't have proper stomach acid, so say you're taking an anti-acid medication, one of the most prescribed medications in the world are PPIs, which block stomach acid production. So you're losing your first layer of protection, which we evolved to have. So it's counterintuitive to give people stomach acid suppressants when that is your first line of defense from getting exposed to bacteria that may come through the food that you eat, or even uh, fungus, yeast, so like candida. So if you have low stomach acid, then you become more prone to getting these infections not really infections, like you might not get diarrhea, but you get something we call dysbiosis. So it's an imbalance of good and bad bugs in the gut. And the dysbiosis then becomes the means by which the gut barrier gets broken down. So then you may eat a food that is that you become sensitive to, and that causes an immune response. Now you may not know you're having an immune response to the food, but you may experience it as <coughs> fatigue as just general malaise, as joint aches, as hives, as a rash. So all these things that seem to be happening in other parts of the body are actually connected to the gut. And then again, distracting your immune system from being able to do the function that it needs to do to protect your body from infection. So Maria, on that topic, um, gut's gigantic role in your immunity explains why the food we eat is so important for our community. Um, so what do you think, in your opinion, as, as really somebody that helps others with this, are the best foods for prevention against like the annual flu or the revolving door of cold that a lot of people experience in the winter? Certain foods are going to support our immune system and make it strong so it can fight off the, you know, in the invaders, the pathogens, the bacteria, the viruses. Uh, and certain foods can actually depress our immune system and make it more likely that we're going to come down with the cold or the flu or whatever that pathogen is. So probably the most important thing that you can make sure that you're getting in is vegetables, your vitamin C rich fruits and vegetables. And I think very oftentimes, especially among people who are interested in health and wellness, and I'm guilty of this sometimes myself as well, is we feel like, oh, we know what's healthy, we know vegetables are healthy, but we're usually not eating enough. So you want to think, if you think of your plate as a pie chart, you want at least 50% of your plate to be made up with vegetables at as many meals, ideally every meal. Um, and that's gonna ensure that you're getting enough of the nutrients that you need and enough of the fiber that you need. That's also great for digestion. And so that's really number one, is making sure you're getting enough fresh produce, fruits, and vegetables. Uh, another type um, or sort of area to, to focus on is also uh, the cruciferous vegetables. 
So these really support your body's detox system and your, and your liver. So they really help your body do its job that it's meant to do. So cruciferous vegetables include things like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, anything that has that really like sulfur smell is gonna be a cruciferous veggie. And then lastly, I would say a lot of garlic and onions and ginger, these foods are known for having either antibacterial, antiviral, or both properties. So consuming them on the regular, I think is, is a good idea. Great. Um, Bashu, so some of you may know this, but Inge sort of came from, I think, a bit of an Ayurvedic food tradition. So would you tell us sort of the inspiration for that and how you incorporate well, first of all, what are you going to foods mean, in case sure. anyone doesn't know, and how you incorporate that during the day? Sure. Um, first thing I'd like to say is I don't feel nearly qualified enough to be speaking alongside the two of these uh, experts. But, you know, India came from a very personal place for me. I grew up here in New York. Uh, my mom and my dad, my mom specifically, uh, really preached from a very early age that food was medicine and it was the center of our foundation, the center of our, our family life. And she was she is a psychologist and also a neuroscientist and she wrote a book in the early nineties that was called Spirit versus Scalpel. And the idea was that in the West we have very prescriptive uh, notions of health and medicine and in the East we have a very very different perspective on what that means. And so I grew up in a household where you know, we didn't have, you know, the emphasis was never really on traditional forms of medicine, but always looking at food as a source of healing and that as a part of a holistic equation, what it meant to feel good and to sort of be centered through your food. And so our, I always had that relationship with food and, and this is very much a personal journey for me. And so I feel like I'm learning as much today through you guys as, uh, as anyone else in, in in the audience. Um, the philosophy behind Ayurveda, which is what you mentioned, is that food is meant to sort of create and be at the center of your life balance. And that's something that we think about a lot here in the restaurant. And one of my frustrations with trying to eat healthy, so to speak, is that it felt like you had to be a master of the latest trend and uh, try to understand you know, what the newest fad was. And actually, Ayurveda sort of created a philosophy that has been around for thousands of years and it's time-tested and it's now coming in vogue um, because it focuses on a lot of the things that, that are being talked about tonight. So eating whole foods, um, focusing on seasonal vegetables, seasonal spices that enhance the relationship between your gut and your immunity system. And we really try to focus on avoiding uh, irritants that I think is pretty universally accepted that people have uh, negative reactions to, whether that's gluten, dairy, uh, processed food, sugar, preservatives. And so we start with that base, and then within that, another sort of foundation of our Ayurvedic thinking and philosophy is that food should be what's called sattvic, so preserving the life force that is inherent in um, inherent in naturally occurring foods and, and plants specifically. And so everything we make here is as organic and as fresh as possible. We don't use any preservatives. We cut and chop and ground spices and do everything the day that we serve it. Uh, there's nothing left over at the end of the night. And we really focus on sort of the, the quality of the ingredients and we try to add spices that we believe to be medicinal and helpful and appropriate for the season. So in the winter, we're focusing on spices that um, help with immunity, that are focused on circulation and anti-inflammation, and in the summer we switch to more cooling and sort of restorative uh, herbs. So that's the philosophy of the brand, and, and as I said, it's very much a journey for us. We're not experts, but we, we are evolving and learning from, from everyone here. So. Yes. Um, so you mentioned a couple of like broad categories, but are there any specific foods sort of that you generally serve because of their community boosting properties, or is everything just kind of? Um, I think you know we 
everything is informed by that, and, and you know the way our bowls are composed. Another sort of principle of Ayurvedic food is that or Ayurvedic philosophy is that every meal should draw on the six sort of main tastes, and so we try to balance our bowls in that way as well. And so we don't we try to not make any compromises, and we don't do things based on just how good they'll taste, but really about the intentional nature of the food. Um, and so everything starts from a really good place. We start with the highest quality ingredients, and then we try to activate them or use spices uh, that further enhance the sort of helpful qualities of it. So I can't speak to one specific thing. One thing that I'm loving right now on our menu is, is our, uh, our winter broth, which, sorry. So we have a winter broth, which we start with pasture, or sorry, organic and antibiotic free bones. We add chaga mushrooms, um, specific spices for the winter like cardamom, um, cayenne, and cinnamon. And you know, obviously it's a collagen rich and really warming and soothing soup that, that we love and we feel like is immunity boosting, but we'd love to sort of hear Dr. Pedro's yes. take so on it if you could verify you guys, that think, for us. Yeah, have uh, some thoughts also on that. Yeah, well, I'll just add in turmeric. It's a very traditional sure. Indian spice uh, that is very healing, uh, has all sorts of health properties, um, including antiviral properties, it's anti inflammatory. Uh, so that's definitely a helpful spice this time of year. Ginger is another one. Uh, ginger is used a lot in Indian cooking. Uh, mushrooms are very well known for their immune boosting properties. Uh, one thing with mushrooms is you do always want to cook them. Um, and even like the white button mushroom is good, but the more exotic types like shiitake and maitake or hemp woods, those are even even better for boosting your immune system. Yeah, I second that. I mean, I, I, I always make a soup when I feel like my immune system is kind of taking a a downturn uh, but the mushrooms are really important so whenever I, I do an immunity boosting soup I always include either shiitake, reishi, the shaga because uh, they have certain properties that increase natural killer cells uh, which have activity against viruses uh, so I find that including the mushrooms in the soup is quite important but also you get a lot of immune boosting properties from using a bone broth uh, that's also really key and critical, including a lot of uh, minerals, uh, but it's very healing to the gut lining and it helps boost the, the immune system. So that's a really great combination. Great. And one last thing I'll throw in, zinc rich foods are also great for supporting the immune system. So oysters, oysters is a good one, uh, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, those are also great to add in to help bolster your immune system. So on that topic, and I'm sure some of these will be fairly obvious, but which foods really suppress your immune system and why? And anybody? I'll start I'd with sugar. sugar. Okay. Yeah, sugar, is, sugar is the biggest immune suppressor. So if you incubate white blood cells with sugar, it stuns them for about six hours. They can't function. Uh, so a diet that's rich in sugar is going to be a diet that's going to inhibit your, your immune system. Now, a lot of people confuse where sugar comes from. You think, well, I don't eat a lot of dessert or I don't add cane sugar. Uh, but sugar can come from a lot of places. Uh, a lot of processed starches, white starches, white rice, uh, white potatoes, that's all sugar. And of course, processed foods. And we also have to be aware of the, the artificial sweeteners uh, because they alter the way that your gut flora functions and they actually increase your blood sugar as a result. 